Okay, the next topic in our uh, search into thermodynamics, or exploration I should say, into thermodynamics is the temperature scales. So in order for us to be able to measure the temperature of an object, the relative hotness or coldness of an object, we have three main temperature scales. One is called centigrade scale, or also known as Celsius. The other one is the Fahrenheit scale, mostly used here in the United States. And then we have the Kelvin scale, which is used mostly in scientific purposes. So, how did we come up with those scales? Well, the centigrade scale was fairly straightforward. What they did was, they took a thermometer, and they plunged the thermometer into a, a bath, or a bucket, or, or a, a beaker, that contained chunks of ice and water at the same time. So in this we have what we call a combination of mixture of ice and water and when we do that uh, we have either the water is freezing if it's getting colder or the ice is melting if it's getting warmer. So it depends upon if heat is coming out or heat is going in. But whenever that happens at standard pressure, which is uh, standard atmospheric pressure, the temperature that would be zero degrees centigrade. So when you stick a thermometer in there, so then it would read zero degrees centigrade. That's called the freezing or the melting point of water. And then if you took the very same temperature and you put it in a pot with that contains water and you heat the water up until it begins to boil, so this is a melting of ice, melting ice, and this is boiling water. And now we stick that very same temperature, a uh, thermometer, into the pot of boiling water, like so. Now the temperature will read 100 degrees centigrade. Of course, both of those things have to occur at standard pressure, because we will find that the boiling point of water will change under different pressure and also to some extent the melting point of ice will also change at certain uh, pressure. So standard pressure, uh, that was uh, one atmosphere exactly, and we'll find then, then of course the difference in the temperature between boiling water and melting ice or freezing water, however you want to look at it, is exactly a hundred centigrade degrees. So then we take that, that thermometer and we divide it in two See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This would be 0 degrees centigrade. And then we divide all of those into 10 equal little lines like that. You can see that very easily we can make a thermometer that then is scaled between 0 and 100, representing the temperature between melting ice and boiling water. All right, now if we do that with a thermometer that has Fahrenheit degrees on it, you'll get a different result. For the case of melting ice or freezing water, the temperature the temperature in Fahrenheit degrees, so uh, temperature in Fahrenheit degrees, will be equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we put it in boiling water, under the same circumstances, boiling water, the temperature will now read, in Fahrenheit degrees, will be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now notice that that's quite a bit different. You say, well, that seems kind of hard. They obviously didn't use melting ice in boiling water to come up with that, that scale. But you can now see the relationship that 0 degrees centigrade is the same as 32, 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees centigrade is the same as 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And in a later video I will show you how to convert from one to the other. You just have to notice that if you take the difference between those, that is 180 Fahrenheit degrees. And if you take the difference between those two, that is 100 centigrade degrees. Now, notice where I put the little symbol for degrees. Here I put it behind, there I put it in front. So what's the difference? What is the difference between one degree centigrade and one centigrade degree? They are not the same thing. One degree centigrade is the actual temperature. It's one degree above zero. One centigrade degree is really the difference between two. Let's say the difference between 14 and 15 or 18 and 19 and so forth. So that's how we denote that. It's not very commonly used, but just sometimes it makes sense to keep that straight. Now we have one more scale. That scale is the Kelvin scale. Now the Kelvin scale was formed because we recognize that there is an absolute temperature in the universe, the coldest it can possibly get, and that's called absolute zero. Now, how does something become absolute zero in temperature? Absolute zero temperature. Well, it turns out again, remember what heat was. Heat was energy that's contained in objects causing the atoms to vibrate back and forth. 
The more heat you put in the object, the hotter the temperature, the faster it begins to vibrate. The more heat you take out of the object, the lower the temperature, the lower the atom, or the, the less the atoms will vibrate. And if we continue to cool down an object by taking out more and more heat out of the object, we can actually get the molecules and the atoms of the object to vibrate so slow that eventually they will essentially stop moving. The only movement they have then is quantum mechanic movement, and we're not going to get into that detail. But for our purpose, we can simply say when all motion in the object stops, that object will be as cold as it can possibly get. That's absolute zero. Now, what is that? What is that? So, in Kelvin degrees, we use the, um, the symbol K. In Fahrenheit degrees, we use the symbol F. And in Celsius degrees, we use the symbol C. And so, for absolute zero, the temperature then is equal to zero Kelvin. Now, we sometimes, yeah, we don't put the degree symbol on Kelvin, by the way, so just simply zero Kelvin. And if we equate that to uh, centigrade degrees, that is equal to minus 273.15 degrees centigrade. Now, the 0.15 is not really necessary, just to be a little bit more exact. Most of the time, we simply say zero Kelvin is equal to minus 273 centigrade degrees, or degree centigrade. All right, so that means that... Um, zero centigrade degrees, so if the temperature is equal to zero degrees centigrade, which is 270 degrees warmer than that, and by the way, a degree centigrade is the same as the degree Kelvin, they're the same size, so you can see that these are not the same size, but Kelvin degrees and centigrade degrees are the same size, which means that when the temperature is zero degrees centigrade, that is equal to 273 Kelvin, we we'll left off the 0.15, so there you can see the comparison. And then, of course, if the temperature is equal to the temperature of boiling water, 100 degrees centigrade, which means that this is 373 Kelvin. We simply add 100 to each, and you can see how they compare to each other. But at least now that you get some sort of idea about the three temperature scales, how the centigrade scale was derived, to see how that relates to the Fahrenheit scale, and then, of course, we have the Kelvin scale that is associated with the coldest it can ever be in the universe, which is minus 273 degrees centigrade. We call that zero degrees Kelvin. And then anything higher than that, we simply just add degrees to that. Okay, so now that we know that, we'll go do another video to show you how to compare, how to go from one scale to another scale.